it is a great honour uh, to be able to give the award today uh, for Distinguished Services to Humanism to someone who has been such a great friend, ally and colleague at IHU for many years. He has dedicated much of his life, so far, to fighting the superstitions and irrational traditions that give rise to the grave violations against human dignity. And not only has he been disabusing and trying to educate uh, his fellow countrymen of certain superstitions, the work of the sceptic, if you like, He's also been working with and supporting victims of witchcraft accusations, which we might, I suppose, call the work of the humanitarian. <coughs> These two impulses, the sceptical educator and the humanitarian, make him the perfect recipient for this year's award for services to humanism. Whilst working locally on witchcraft accusations and related abuse, he served for some years as the international representative of the IHEU for West Africa. <laughs> it's all becoming clearer. Oh, good, 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 good surprise face. Very good. And participated at the African Commission on Human and People's Rights on our behalf. Already a graduate in philosophy and an extremely well-informed activist and campaigner, our award winner has since taken his work documenting and understanding witchcraft-related uh, violence and abuse into academia, and now has just uh, received. A PhD from the University of Beirut in Germany for this. By right. By right. <laughs> Has just received a, a PhD from the University of. By right. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Organisationally, um, he's not only worked with IQ, but is really the founder of the humanist movement in his home country of Nigeria. He's worked with the Centre for Inquiry and the James Randi Educational Foundation, and in addition to his work on witchcraft, and human sacrifice and other malign practices, he's highlighted as well the abuse of Nigeria's regional government structure by religious groups and leaders, which gives rise to localised enforcement of religious codes under the law, contrary to the constitution of Nigeria. All this work has not been an easy vocation. He's been threatened and maligned by some of the churches who perpetrate witchcraft and sorcery accusations. He's been arrested during human rights field work on several occasions. He's been imprisoned and beaten by police Without, uh, without charge uh, before being released. Perhaps most depressing and infuriating, members of his own family were attacked themselves in reprisal for his work. So it is with true admiration, as well as great personal warmth, that we recognize today the activism, the commitment, the courage, and the passion of our remarkable humanist and friend as we give the 2017 Distinguished Services to Humanism Award to Dr. Leo Igwe. <laughs> award to all humanists at risk around the globe. I feel humbled by this honor and I thank you so much. But I must acknowledge that if one goes through the list of recipients, past recipients. It is obvious that my contribution to international humanism and organized humanism are quite small. Otherwise, how could one compare my contribution to those of the likes of American philosopher Paul Islam, Indian humanist Dumati Parikh and Abbasoni? British humanist 
David Pollock, Robbie Robson, and of course my friend Josh Kochinski, who is sitting at the back there. And uh, I believe I'm speaking on behalf of all of us here at Josh, we wish you a quick recovery. Yeah. How could one compare my contribution to those of past IHU president Roy Brown and Sonia Egrick? Sonia, who received the award last year. So I have eventually found myself in the midst of humanist giants, and that is humbling. I'm aware that this award was not just meant for me. It was not just meant to recognize my contribution. This award speaks to the very vision that has been there since the beginning of IHU. The vision that drove British humanists Harold Blackham and other humanist delegates from across the world to start IHU in Amsterdam in 1952. And that is the vision that has been the pillar of international humanism of IHU. And that is the refusal to accept humanism as it is and to try and organize and mobilize to re realize humanism as it should be. So it was the same vision that led me to start the Nigerian Humanist Movement in 1996. I was not born a humanist. In fact, I was trained to become a priest, <laughs> not a humanist leader. I had no experience in organized humanism. And in my country, many people perceive NGOs as humanitarian organizations, and they come to these NGOs thinking about what they will gain from these organizations more than what these organizations will give them, more than what they will contribute to these groups. So, but that notwithstanding, I knew that there was something missing in humanism as it was organized there, and I did much I could to supply this missing link and help, and help move Nigerian humanism towards what humanism should be. So luckily, the movement in Nigeria has managed to survive and remains on course for the past 20 years now and see counting. In fact, we are beginning to see strong signs of humanism as it should be. We have witnessed the emergence of humanist groups and activists working and campaigning to promote humanist lifestyles. And two of these groups, including one, the Peace Society of Nigeria, have been registered with the government in the past five years. We have witnessed a successful campaign that led to the release of Mubarak Bala, whose family consigned to a mental hospital after he renounced Islam. That is humanism as it should be. And last month, AO hosted their event in Lagos. Nigeria. So, so, friends, we have seen a wave of humanism sweeping across the region in Ghana, Kenya, Uganda, Malawi, Zambia, Zimbabwe, Botswana, and South Africa. It is also in forefront of humanism as it should be that led me to contact IHU in the, in the 90s. I attended the World Humanist Congress in Mumbai in 1999, where I addressed the humanist event for the first time, and I joined the IHU Growth and Development Committee. So let us not forget that it was a quest for humanism as it should be that led the then IHU president, Norwegian humanist David Prager, to visit Nigeria, Uganda, and, and in 2002. That same vision led IHU to organize its first general assembly in Africa in 2004 and sent a strong delegation to a conference in Nigeria the same year. So IHU also appointed two representatives in Africa and secured an NGO status at the African Commission on Human and People's Rights. IHU and its member organizations have also established and supported secular schools in Uganda because humanists understand that clearly, without a secular education, without secular education, a secular society cannot stand. They understand clearly that without secular education, humanism as it should be cannot stand in Africa or anywhere in the world. And in recent years, we have also witnessed changes at IHU that have brought representatives from Africa and, uh, and Asia to IHU board. And, uh, and in 2002, IHU has also been publishing freedom of, freedom of Church Report that documented the discrimination and persecution of non-believers, including those in my own country, Nigeria. That gives me hope for the future of humanism, and that gives human humanist hope across the world. And in fact, in your latest campaign to support humanists at risk, that was the master stroke. And that is humanism as it should be. So, friends at IHU, supporters, group members, I say, keep on moving in the direction of humanism as it should be, and be always assured of my continued support and contribution to your work and programs for the rest of my active years. Thank you for this award. <laughs>